Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, and hey, hello, happy Monday. Hope you're having the best Monday possible out there in cryptocurrency land, the best Monday that you could ever have in your life. Until next Monday, where I'll wish you an even better Monday. But for now, we have some very, very serious magic internet money business to get deep and dirty down into right over here in the live scene. So let's waste no more time getting over to it right over here. So Bitcoin has closed out the week below that critical 4200 level that we spoke on. Um, so that is likely to become a nice, nasty resistance going forwards here. Of course, always want to be cognizant and uh, and be very adamant in stating that hey as long as we're below 6100 you know it's hard to be <laughs> it's hard to be like saying oh the low is in or anything like that of course there's going to be you know there's going to be markers along the way but i always do want to you know just as ju uh, just as when we were living above it breaking it on the way down i always had to say hey you know as long as you're above this area don't really want to be getting too damn bearish well as long as you're below this area now don't really want to be getting too damn bullish saying like hey we're going back to all-time highs and then higher and higher and higher all the way to 100 billion billion kajillion thousand where john McAfee won't have to eat his own cock anyways <laughs> anyways uh with with yesterday's uh weekly dildo close i believe that we have actually seen um some good evidence on what is likely to happen this week again when it comes down to it the range that b is likely going to be between 4150 and our current low of around 3600 we could narrow that down to perhaps 3700 but overall i think today i think this week's going to likely just be some ranging activity i don't think that we make new lows um and when i say make new lows i mean like you know really head down onto the next blue box territory uh right around here on the um 26 27 2800 level uh that i am looking towards over time but um but for now you know after last night's weekly dildo close we have done something that you know has never happened in bitcoin's history we have both opened and closed a weekly dildo below this purple 200 exponential yes we did close one below here but we haven't but this is the first time that, we've, that we both opened and closed so that is a confirmed kill of this exponential movement average and i think that we will be living below it for quite some time now hey you might get a couple weeks up you know that's that uh that is completely fine but overall it does seem to me that the market is completely cool with uh, with living below this area. You will notice that also the 200 exponential has completely flatlined. This thing is not flatlined. I mean, pretty much ever in Bitcoin's history. I mean, you know, you, you don't really have enough history going all the way back on over here because remember, you need 200 months in order to really get even one tick on this. Maybe we could go to the BLX index. Yeah. And uh, over here, it actually did flatline when you were uh, in your accumulation phase of 2014. But again, very, very new and novel at that point in time. This is the first time where like, you know, we've seen it just uptrend and then flatten. And yes, it is completely flat right now. So that would be suggesting that the, <laughs> that, that things, you know, are going to get, be getting a little bit more tough. Now, I do want to be very adamant in saying this as well. I think, you know, you're going to get a lot of the perma bears and a lot of the, you know, a lot of the novice, I shouldn't say novice traders, but a lot of the newer traders saying, we're going to be going down to 2,800 right here, right now. It's like okay no hold on hold on we're likely going to be stuck in a range again going back to the bit mexico chart i've not changed a single fucking trend line on this guy in the last like ever since we got down around here essentially um we have broken this 40 uh 40 60 support right over here and now we've just fallen into like the next kind of block so to say or if you want to call it an order block that's good uh, but basically support 3930 and resistance 3980 if you can break above 3980 then yeah then then uh then probably another test back into like the 40 40 40 60 range right over here um but overall it does look like things are a little bit more droopy i mean are you creating like a bear flag right, right over here perhaps um and if you do lose this area, you know, I don't I don't really care about making any sort of me measure move. But, uh, you know, the next area of support that I see is, is this blue box territory right over here that we've kind of had marked off for quite some time. Again, it's not like a big, you know, deal or anything like that. It's it's not like this is, you know, going to be the ultimate low or anything like that. It's just like, hey, if you get down there, a trade to be is to be made if you want to be playing the ranges or at least that that is kind of the way that I will be coming from it. I don't really have any directional trades on right now. I don't have any intent to have any directional trades on I'm just playing options at the current moment in time because uh, I I. I I do believe that this is going to be a decay game going on right now um overall you know you know it's certainly not out of the question to kind of take a take a stab towards our prior lows in fact i'd be kind of leaning towards it during this week sometime this week again doesn't really you know i, I don't really have like a time frame or anything for this it's just to me the range is pretty damn set now between about you know you know at, at most 4300 and uh, and at least about 3600 think of it as like the 6000 range when uh, when bitcoin was kind of in this uh, in this mode over here I don't think it's going to take as long, you know, but but basically this guy right over here, I don't think it's going to take as long, but you're going to get kind of like the same sort of activity I'd imagine where, you know, you, you, you smash down into it first, you just like fucking ram it first, and then you bounce up pretty good, and then, you know, you're going to ram it again, you're going to bounce up a little bit less, and blah, 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 all good stuff, um, but again, you know, I just want to have a very, you know, 
a very consistent view on this say, say, uh, stating, hey, I, I do believe that things kind of slow up right now. Uh, Bitcoin lost about what, like 50% in, in, in about a week and a half. Yeah, it's it's likely that you do spend a little bit of time like going sideways and just frustrating people because now all of like the bottom shorters and all like the people who are just late to the party feeling re like realizing that this asset's probably going down further um, are like, holy shit, I better get in a short right now. And then, you know, they're going to get shaken out. And then all the permeables, you know, you got to give them hope again. So we're going to have, you know, a few bounces, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but you but you will notice on the on the daily right here, we are breaking the 10 simple moving average. It is once again sloped to the downside. We haven't even got anywhere near our yellow 20 minute exponential moving average. Um, which at some point in time, you know, the more time that uh, that Bitcoin, you know, spends going sideways right here, it will, you know, start to hook around towards our resistance level, which we could kind of just mark out as this guy right over here between 4250 and 4300, we'll call it. Um, so at some point in time, it will get down there. And I, and I would imagine maybe that's the time when you actually do get to formally test it. First pass will probably be a sell. And then after that, the games begin. Um, but for now, you know, just kind of filling out this area. And I don't think that there's going to be too much to do this week. Yes, you know, if we do look at our, at our daily oscillators our rsi will be testing the edge of the bear zone but typically speaking when you get a bullish divergence like this on a daily you know and you play it out to the ed to the edge of your bear zone right here um that is you know in a heavily bearish market that will get sold into and that's exactly what we had right here we tested this right here and then bounced off of it coming back to it again that typically is not a buy so this first one over here typically a buy for 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 at least a bounce you did get a bounce from about 39 all the way to 43 uh so you would have had a nice trade there but the second one coming back down not so much i would not be looking at the same things so you know we spoke about that kind of trade before that trade is not on the table right here at least as far as i'm concerned could it happen yeah but it's not like a high statistical setup or anything like that that's my point and that's what trading really is about is you know finding your your probabilistic you know advantages and right there that is not you know you're, you're not really having it um Going over here to the 12 hour, 12 hour, I think is a little bit more clean, actually. Uh, again, rejecting the 10 simple moving average below all major moving averages. And uh, in overall, I think our 12 hour stokes have crossed down. Yes, they have. Um, so again, you know, kind of nasty. And same thing over here, uh, a little bit more pronounced on your 12 hour RSI, you know, giving you the bullish divergence, getting the edge of the bear zone right over here, but rejecting from it. So again, you know, I would imagine that we come, we, we pop back down to this area right over here. That's probably going to correlate, you know, with either on this support or this support. And then you probably get a bounce from there. And we're just going to really just frustrate a shit ton of people thinking that markets move in a straight fucking line either which way um in this range I, I think most people are expecting like major moves like we had the last week i think that that's unlikely right here again going over to our uh, uh bitcoin historical volatility index um on mex you know you can see especially if we put it on uh, on linear scale yeah it's gonna make a little bit more sense on linear scale right over here you know bitcoin when it broke six thousand for about a week and a half was hanging at this 10 this 10 mark right over here which is pretty fucking hefty i mean in you know that that uh that is certainly above you know your mean i i guess you could say uh in december you were you were about double that by the way just for a reference um but now we're you know we're cooling off we're, we're cooling off we're coming back to like the mean so to, uh, so to speak Sorry, I keep on getting that one wrong. Uh, right around five uh, at the current moment in time. So I'd imagine that, you know, we spend some time just basically, you know, cooling off um, as all of the oscillators, all of the indicators, you know, start to reset. I don't like that word. I think it's like a little bit misleading when people say that, like, they're just resetting, guys, and then we're going to go again. It's like, <laughs> okay, kind of. Kind of in a way, but uh, Bitcoin actually moving down a little bit right now. Um, let's go down to lower time frames. Uh, we got hourly right over here. Again, support that we're currently resting on is, well, it's actually a little bit lower than where I currently have it. Uh, at around 39.30, yeah. Um, so if we do break that area, then th this is just going to look like, you know, kind of like a bear flag right here. So we technically can make a measure move on it. Do you, you know, do you want to do it out or not? I mean, you know, no, no harm in really doing it. Let's see if it lines up with anything that's going to that's going to make it interesting. And it does, you know, it would kind of be pointing down down towards this uh, a hair below thirty eight hundred. So that's kind of the next, you know, um, uh, trade I'll be looking for if I'm if I'm looking to play the ranges, which I do believe is the right way to be playing this. Or if you know how to play options or if you're in the options program, you'll notice that I've been playing, you know, some uh the what i believe are the best option strategies for this kind of shit um so again if you're in the options program by the way check out the new modules as i have been uploading my own trades again this none of this financial advice not a financial advisor it's just there to show how i would trade something like this um and you know it's, it's going to stand the test of time is, is really the is really the idea there so it's not meant to be followed um 
or anything like that. But again, you know, just for future reference, th this is this is where you know selling premium can really fucking shine. Um, you know, that that uh, then again, I am making the assumption that that we will not break thirty six hundred. Um, you know, on this drive or, 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 or at least in the next week or two, uh, which I do feel, you know, should I say strongly? I don't know if strongly is the right word, but I do feel is, is likely. We don't, we don't really make new lows for a little bit of time. We got got to shake some people out, you know, a lot of people on the short side uh, of this trade right now already have almost uh, 36,000 open shorts on Finex. Um, that is certainly a, a significant amount of number. Now, of course, when it comes down to it, because we are in a bear market right now, and this is a heavy bear trend, yes, shorts are going to naturally be higher because, you know, they aren't really under pressure. I mean, when price action is going in your way, well, what do you really have to be, what do you really have to be afraid of? Now, you will notice again, going, going into the lower time frames, uh, shorts have been a pretty, have, were doing a very good job of like running the market that, uh, th this was your break of 6,000, you know, they ran the market right here, took profits, ran it, took profits, ran it, took profits. And now it's getting a little bit, you know, it's getting a little bit up there. I, I think another, you know, the drive down, we'll, we'll grab a few more and then you can probably have another, you know, another squeeze and we'll probably just play that sort of formula out for, you know, I don't know, a week or two, maybe the whole December, December, again, typically an up month. And we will be looking at the traditional marks in just a second as well because they are suggesting a lot more up right now there has been some good things over the weekends and uh and i'm going to adjust my view on that um pretty shortly although the long-term view still stands but short-term view i don't think it's going to be i i think you're going to be going doing some more up rather than just sideways but uh, i mean it's all the same shit to me in december really anyways um okay so let's go check out gbdc gbdc closing the week out um you know, a little bit off its lows, kind of filling the gap right here and having a reaction around it, but not, you know, to me, this is not that good. Um, again, GBTC range, you know, it's going to be the same as Bitcoin, right? $5 and 54 cents. And, you know, between that and our current low, and I know that that's not too helpful or too profound or anything like that. Um, but there's really not too much to be said about this guy right here. It looks to me like it just wants to, it just wants to spend some time going sideways. Yes, we did reject from the red 10 simple moving average right over here. So that would be suggesting you know probably more downwards pressure probably do sweep the lows once again which is how i feel about bitcoin right now it probably do sweep the lows um again now i do want to bring up a couple other way uh, uh, a couple other unique ways of looking at this again not my favorite way of doing things but you know just kind of going off of what we were looking at before and kind of following that up i'm going to put on the troll in your bands troll -lo -lo -lo, and <laughs> feels fun to say um and uh, right over here the weekly is very interesting to me because we actually completely rejected the lower band right here we completely rejected the lower band and closed another weekly doodle outside of the lower band so if you're familiar with reading troll in bands this to me would be state would be suggesting that we're going to have continuation of trend essentially um or at least or at least spend another week to like trying to trying to test the lows and then probably pop back into this area is it, you know again this is very bad technical analysis i'm giving an opinion here rather than technical analysis it's very bad to do um i've been a bad boy and santa's going to be giving me some red dildos for christmas but at the current moment in time you know, I would be looking at it with that sort of uh, uh, that uh, that sort of lens right now. Again, on your way up, yes, you did push outside of the trolling bands over here plenty of times, and you can stay outside of them for quite some time. Again, noobs, sorry, not noobs, but maybe less educated ed less educated people uh, who might who might just go on Investopedia for the first time and they read about the trolling bands like, oh man, this is the range. It can't go any lower. Can't go can't go lower, bro. No, this is actually telling you that this trend is incredibly strong and it's likely to continue. That's what it's telling you. Uh, again, trends that are strong continue more. It's not like the, it's not like they just you know go a certain amount. It's like, sorry, bro, R size at ten, gotta go up. No, it, it doesn't fucking matter. Speaking of the R side, by the way, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin getting down. Well, come on, baby. Uh, Bitcoin getting down. You know, kind of testing almost the the uh, the the edge of the more critical zone on the bear side. Um, and whoops. Oh, we don't have that much information on uh, on GDAX. We got to go to Bitstamp right over here. Yeah, you will notice in 2014. You know, the only other time that Bitcoin's ever gotten even into the negative zone on the RSI uh, was in 2014, right over here. And you know, you typically will find a little bit of support around this area. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin spends a lot of time going sideways here. Where was that area? It was actually right over here on, on that first major bounce edge. Um, so again, you know, something to be aware of when it comes down to it. As we do have a lot of confluence between this area area and this area over here. I'm not saying that that is going to play out one to one exactly like this. I think that that's extremely misleading. And when people, you know, on good old crypto Twitter talk about, guys, I think I found the fractal or, oh, we have a fractal here and now we maybe go moon. Well, 
that's very misleading because you can't do these things one to one. But Mark cycles do have brotherly characteristics as, you know, we're all humans. We're all dealing with human psychology. And that hasn't changed ever since we became anatomically modern homo sapiens. So it's like, so basically we looked at like, you know, that in a way repeated over time, but like with slightly different variations. So that's why market cycles are typically brotherly rather than uh, identical brothers. Um, and over here you can see, yes, you know, our, 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 uh, we are closing outside of the lower Trollinger band right over here, but I want to go down to the three day. Now the three day we did close, uh, we did close once, uh, we did close inside and we closed another dildo yesterday at 7 PM Eastern standard time, um, on the three day dildo chart, rejecting kind of the lower band. So, so what this is telling us over here is that, Hey, we can, we can take another stab towards the lower of this band, which by the way is at that 300, 3,600 mark right over there. Um, but you know, I do think that we, that we just kind of like pick it up and then start to like, you know, just fill out this area. Most likely that's, that uh that is what i feel like is most likely uh during this week especially with the way that we got the weekly diddle close uh two day over here uh two day over here looks pretty nasty but again kind of like within the bounds of it probably does spend a little bit of time going sideways that's a 20 simple it starts or the skid mark over here starts to kind of hook around and uh, catch up to current price action again i, I think it's going to be a decay game I, I people looking for a big move right here just wasting your fucking time it's it's like crypto twitter always thinks that think, thinks that there's a fucking move to be had no there's not i barely made a trade last week and and to be honest there wasn't even really a trade to be made last week until really yesterday um which we spoke about in the uh, in the discord or i think i spoke about it on video yesterday perhaps but but basically the uh the the eight hour right over here gave the signal in my opinion uh a little bit before the daily dollar closed we closed two dollars below this 21 exponential and then boom uh nice nicely done so that's what I was looking for, and uh, and that that is what happens, um, and playing out so far, very very nice. Anyways, um, back on over here to our Bit Mexico chart. I'm gonna put. I'm just gonna go through like the lower time frames and see what we got. Uh, you know, yes, we are obviously resting on on support right over here, but you know, you can, you know. It, it, all of these fucking things, man, I've seen break out every goddamn which way. So if we did break it out to the upside, yes, you would have resistance right over here, right around uh, 40, 60 ish area, which we should be able to make a measure move off this. Typically speaking, these, these sorts of things will, uh, will, will be equated. Sorry, let me get it like actually right. There we go. Yeah, and and it'd be kind of kind of be coming in right around there. Uh, you know, I, I do lean towards it being broken to the downside, but I don't really have a strong opinion on it either which way. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting to kind of play the other side essentially and just you know buy support sell resistance. Make it fucking simple on yourself. When you have ranging price action, play fucking ranges or play options. Um, even better. Uh, three hour over here. Three hours is interesting to me because it looks like it wants to go further down. Three hour stoke still pointing to the downside. Three hour RSI getting comfortably into the bear zone right over here. Once the exponential catches up to it, I think that we will be kind of heading a little bit lower, most likely. Um, Eight hour over here again, going over the eight hour. You know, Stokes just still headed down, uh, kind of almost even a fresh cross in a way. And uh, in eight hour RSI now trending below the exponential as well, getting getting rejected from the neutral zone over here. So to me, that is also a big deal, as you can see. You know, it's it's just saying, hey, we 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 are pretty comfortable uh, sitting in this uh, bear zone. So again, uh, higher time frames are all kind of like that right now. Uh, Twelve hour over here, obviously we already looked at that, so I don't really need to go need to go over that guy again. Um, um, I do want to go over, um, which one was it? I wanted to go over, where was he? Uh, let, yeah, let's go over traditional markets right now as they will be opening up a little bit later tonight. So they had a pretty damn good close on Friday. And this to me is is really indicative. We spoke about last week as well as, as their traditional markets were like kind of likely to go sideways to slightly up. Uh, we went we went up, I mean, you know, a, a good amount, um, just filling up this range essentially though. So I, I kind of consider that sideways, but now we have actually done something interesting. And, and this is what makes me think that we do have a big, uh, or at least a big up open this week and probably do continue it on throughout the week. Uh, but basically, you know, you have your purple 200 exponential and your, and your green 55 exponential right over here. And you know, if they were to cross to the downside, that would have been a death cross. Now, what you can see right here is we're actually reject what, what we're doing is we're actually rejecting that. And that tells me that, that, uh, that someone really does not want to be on the sell side or or just people you know the program this the 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 algos are not on the sell side right now they're on the buy side as we do kind of uh lift lift on and upwards um 
So I'll be looking for this to kind of continue more. Yeah, you do have resistance around 281 uh, and 30 cents. You know, maybe you bounce off there if you get if you get up there. Probably do get up there a little bit later today. Um, but overall, throughout the week, I would imagine that uh, that you know it's going to be we're we're, we're going to be hanging at the highs and uh, and probably just fucking around there and uh, you know a little bit of sideways as well. But overall, you know, we're in December now. Typically, just an up to sideways month, and uh, and that's that's basically what it feels like. Yes, we we did close below all these exponentials, right? Or sorry, the 21 and the 10 simple right here so i would be i would be you know taking that into consideration for the end of the week but for now you know d d uh, direction at the beginning of the week is going to be up uh where we close this next weekly is going to give a lot of insight onto what the next move is going to be if we can close above the 21 then yes you know i would be looking to actually probably make a run towards about 285 or so um maybe even 287 i mean it's basically the same fucking number man it's two two dollars away uh but, but hey you know again it's, it's going to be a waiting game as december typically is not like huge directional trades be made but uh but more of a decay game um than anything else so 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 let's get back on over here to, to our bitstamp chart and talk a little bit about what this means for the overall picture so bitcoin you know, closing below the 200 exponential, which is not only just the 200 exponential, but you also notice this is dotted trend line right over here. That is going to the inception of going back to the inception of Bitcoin, never been broken. And you'll notice that last week we actually got all the way up to even test it. And yes, I do consider that a test is close enough. So close enough is close enough. And that is a rejection, a rejection of that, of, of what would be the bull channel. Um, or what bulls were calling the, calling the bull channel and closing below this 200 exponential to me is very, 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 very powerful. So likely over time, yes, I do believe that Bitcoin will be going down. We have, we have, ha we have found support along this diagonal trend line right here, you know, and, and very, 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 very similar to how we posture this in 2014. You know, you break out of your diagonal right over here, bounce off of it once, bounce off of it twice at your ultimate low. Well, we bounce off of it, uh, off of it on the first time at the 786. Well, where is this one coming in around the 786? Uh, where, did, where did you bottom out in 2014? The 886. Um, the 886 on, uh, on, on Bitcoin right over here would actually be coming in around 2300. Um, I do think that Bitcoin actually probably has like a wick lower. Uh, it, it just feels to me like so many people are, are so dismissive of price action going below 3000 or even 2000 that it just makes it a little bit more likely. Again, when it comes down to it, bear markets end when the last seller has sold. Who are the, who are the, who are the sellers who will be selling? Well, hodlers, 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 essentially, especially, you know, hodlers who don't have other forms of income or are reliant in some way on Bitcoin or in some way vulnerable to, to a significant price swing in Bitcoin. Well, that's really who the big boys or just the market movers will be going after because well you can make models of that sort of things so if people have limited funds which typically they do and if they haven't planned for something like this which i think a lot of people <laughs> haven't um it, I mean, it really shows up in the dissonance with <laughs> with the fact that people think that this thing's just going to fucking be bottom out of here um <laughs> sorry um you know, you know, pe the, the, uh, those people will be fucking gunned after. And, you know, where do they capitulate? Well, where they have maximum pain. So, you know, if they think that it can't go below this level right here, it probably will. Um, but again, I'm not going to say that 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 uh, that Bitcoin definitely goes below this area, th this uh, this secondary blue box right over here. I think that is very likely that you get to the secondary blue box over here, uh, which, by the way, if we were to make like a date projection, if we were to kind of, you know, just follow this one down, because remember, you did bounce off of your diagonal once over here and then twice over here. Well, that would be somewhere in like late January to 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 middle of February, which is kind of what I'm thinking, you know, and kind of would make sense with the regular market as well as right now i'm not i'm not bearish on the regular markets right now in fact i think it's going to go up to like sideways to up and then probably january february in regular markets i think comes down as you know the monthly does show some heavy pressure down um i'm i'm open to changing that as well but for now that is what i see um and that that is what i'd be leaning towards and again you know why do i even talk about that well there's great correlation between this market and uh in traditional markets as Bitcoin um, essentially considered a risk on asset. I know that 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 uh, that crypto anarchists fucking hate that because they think that Bitcoin is supposed to be like a hedge against the traditional markets. Nope, that's not what the markets say. They say that they're actually pretty damn uh, pretty damn correlated right now. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so let's also put on the 200 simple over here um, and just kind of hash this idea out right now. So let's just talk about the similarities uh, of this area that we're currently in with this area right over here. And keep in mind, this area over here, yeah, you did bounce up quite a bit, um, but ultimately it was it was just a range. It was just sideways. So first things first, we're resting on our 200 exponential over here. We're resting, well, you kind of were resting on your 200 exponential right over here. If we go to the BLX index, it's going to be a little bit more better. Yeah, more better. Um, but yeah, right over here, the purple 200 exponential actually hold, or actually no, it was, it was, it was, it was much further away. 
way. But again, very, very new over here. You know, you need 200 ticks on this to even get one tick on the uh, on that. Um, I think it was a bit uh, a little bit too new to really even consider right now. Um, but hey, that that uh, but but that would also be a very bad thing if you were going off of it because I'm sure there's gonna be someone who says, oh, well, we're already there then, so we're definitely gonna be bouncing up, and that's the ultimate low, and the and and, and moon. It's like okay, no. <laughs> because we have something very unique going on over here. As we started off with this video, we have both opened and closed our first weekly total below the 200 exponential in the history of Bitcoin. The history of Bitcoin, that is bad. That means that the sell programs, that the sell algos are respecting that area. They are comfortable with living under that area. And I would be guessing that we're probably gonna be living under that area for quite some time. Um, in fact, I mean, pe uh, I mean, people get really pissed off when I say, I don't think 6,000 is gonna be revi uh, revisited anytime soon. And when I say anytime soon, I mean like, at least a few months into into 20, uh, 2019 and probably probably longer. I don't think ten thousand getting 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 visited like like, at, like <laughs> I mean it's not even like in my fucking mind right now. Um, but hey, uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't even talk about this. Anyways, this level, this this one that we're currently at, uh, is also the seven eight six zero not true tracement. That's also where we were in twenty um, in twenty fourteen. You know, if, on this first bounce, first bounce right over here. If we were to do a uh, a percentage kind of projection right over here, let's actually do this guy out, and you can see that this would be about a seventy seven percent drawdown right there. Let's see if let's see if we can kind of find any sort of similarities between what we're doing right over here and the sweep first blue box. Oops, I think I'm a little bit too high over here. Uh, let's go right there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, right over here. Um, and do we have this one? No, we're a little bit higher. Got to get it exactly right. Otherwise, it won't do it. Yeah, about 78% versus 79%. It's basically, I mean, sorry, 78.71. So it's basically fucking 79% versus 79%. So that's pretty damn confluent to me. Again, not my favorite way of doing things, but it is interesting that these kind of have a uh, good, good cross round with each other. If we were to extrapolate this guy all the way to the ultimate low right over here, that'd be 87%. If we would extrapolate that one in, into the secondary blue box right over here, 87%, that would be literally right over here at around 2,500 ish, you know, get, give or take a few bucks. Um, and, and, you know, if we put it on this guy as well, it'd be like beginning of February. So does that make sense or not? You know, again, I'm not saying that that's exactly how it's going to go, but it does look like a way forwards over here. Probably going to, you know, like I said, probably going to spend some time going sideways just like we did in 2014. And, uh, and then when everyone thinks that the bottom's in that you can't go lower because 6,000 held so many times that just can't go lower, bro. We've tested 6,000 so many times. It's bounced up every time I'm going to be buying. Well, that's exactly when the fucking dumps probably going to happen because everyone's going to fuck can buy thinking that it's a done deal it's yearly lows man can't go lower it's like i how many times have i fucking heard that it's just so so simple-minded and that is you know it's just one of those things it's like this is going to be so obvious in hindsight and, and we were saying that above six thousand. it's like this is going to be so fucking obvious in hindsight everyone's going to be saying like man what the fuck well you're going to probably have the same feeling after this area right over here. Um, the secondary blue box that we're looking at down around here. Yeah. You know, we spoke about how it's a seven, the eight, eight, six, seven, nine, trace me. We spoke about the, the percentage drawdown and also it's a 200 simple moving average, you know, kind of, it's going to start to hook around this area as well. Um, as we kind of spend more time going sideways over here. So I do like that area now. We did close the monthly uh, the other day, so let's actually go look at this guy for a second as well. Uh, monthly over here, we did, you know, we, we took a stab down to the green 55 exponential over here. Good thing that you didn't break it on your first pass. I mean, holy shit, that would have been really, uh, <laughs> that, that would have been, that, that would have been very concerning, <laughs> I'll put it that way. It wouldn't have been very encouraging at all. Um, so again, you know, your green 55 exponential uh, on this guy, you know, it's kind of telling me that the range is likely to be between this guy right over here, which, which by the way, has flatlined again, the flatline for the first time essentially in history, but you know, probably we don't have enough history over here going over here to the, um, to the BLX index, which has the most history, you know, your 55 would be coming in right, uh, or it's, I mean, you've never flatlined on this one either, uh, but you are kind of holding above it. And, and all it's telling us, it's just suggesting that that we have support right around that 3,700 level and probably between there and like in this uh, 4,700 block right over here, which I would agree with. You know, I, I think that probably we do get another run up there and probably wick up there. But ultimately, I don't think that we get above that area for and like close higher level dildos above that area for a little bit of time. I mean, you know, I think that we probably go probably lower um, first. 
before like closing a weekly over that level is what I mean. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind like a stab towards that area. In fact, I think that, you know, that's probably likely, but it probably gets rejected, you know, pretty heavily, um, as well. You know, keep in mind this sort of action in 2014 was, 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 was this was pretty filthy right here. You bounced essentially, you bounced about 20% off the lows initially, right? Um, let's see what we've done on 20, uh, on 2018. Uh, did we bounce about 20% off the lows? About 14.5% off the lows so far. Now, again, can compare that with what you did on the capitulation low of 2014 as well. I'm not saying that it has to be exactly this much, but it is interesting that that was about, you know, double that around 40%. And if you, and if we go from wick to dildo body, you know, it's, it's literally like 69%, which excellent number. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I'm looking at this area right over here and, uh, and just, it's mainly, mainly just range and activity. Yeah. But, but, but at the same point in time, you did have a pretty hefty move. You actually had about a f fucking 60% move, um, from, from wick to wick. Although I'm not sure that that's the best way to be doing this one. Maybe let's use dildo bodies. And yeah, it was about a 23% move. Um, as, uh, as everyone thought that that was likely to low and, eventually you just fall on further. So again, just things to be aware of over here that, uh, I, I, I've, I've high doubts that the party is over anytime soon for the bears. You know, the only way that the bear party ends is like if all the fucking bears just get so they get so fucking rich that they do all the drugs in the world and just like start sniffing cocaine, like goddamn Scarface and then fall over and die. And then <laughs> the bulls can take over because the bears will be hibernating, <laughs> which I I can't I can't get over that fucking bullshit that people would be saying. Uh guys, Bitcoin is always bullish in October, okay? I know what happens in the history during October in the fall. Bears hibernate. It's like, yeah, cuz it's it's like actually real bears behind the fucking computer keyboards doing the selling. That's very interesting. <laughs> What the actual, where the fuck do people come up with this shit, man? It's like, it did this last time, so it's definitely going to do this again. It's like, no, <laughs> probably not. You typically go up in, in, in November, sorry, in October, November, because it was a bull market for three fucking years over here. In October, November of 2014, when you actually had a bear market, well, it was actually this area right over here. <laughs> you know, you're still heading lower. <laughs> so, uh, so again, people are very, 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 very interesting in this space. Um, Anyways, let's go over. Let's go over to the three day right over here. Three day looks pretty nasty. Um, again, just kind of drooping over. Uh, not really too much to say about this, although you will get your you will get a death cross in the three day dildo chart pretty fucking soon. Um, so that's now on my radar. This is happening. Uh, unless if price action rallies back above sixty one hundred in the next like week, you will get that death cross on the three day dildo chart. And what what happened the last time you got a three day dildo death cross? Well. We only have one example in Bitcoin's history. It was right over here. It crossed right here, and then boom, to your ultimate red deal to capitulation death hole uh, about, let's see how far the drop was, um, about 50% lower. So am I saying that we go 50% lower from here once you get that cross? I don't know. I don't really care either. Um, again, I'm just trading this. I'm, I'm not really an investor. I, I will be an investor. I'm, I'm happy to be an investor when, when, if and when Bitcoin actually finds a bottom. Um, and I do believe in Bitcoin long term, so I'd love to do that. But, uh, but for now, definitely not an investor. Uh, more of a trader, I guess you could say. Um, but you know, again, it, we th th this this is really fucking bad over here. Three day dollar death. I mean, th this is uncharted territory in Bitcoin's history, really. I mean, the the, the last time you actually got this uh, the, uh, this death cross, I mean. Yeah, you did have an actually you did have enough price action history to go off of. So I was gonna say that you know it's a little bit too new, but nah, uh, this will definitely uh, this will definitely hurt. Um, again, you know what happened when you got your two day dildo death cross? Well, that that uh, that was kind of the impetus for me really looking for the big short on breaking the six thousand level. Yeah, we thought it was gonna break beforehand, but th this was really in my mind like confirmation. Bitcoin's actually at thirty nine hundred right now. As this red dildo just gets even more intense, more girthy, more shiny, and more powerful. <sighs> as these bulls shudder in its wake. Anyways, uh, you know, pushing it all the way down over here, you know, they, uh, and they are still getting momentum away from each other. The, you know, this trend is extremely strong. That's what it's telling. It's not saying that, you know, it's ending anytime soon, basically. Um, and with the three day, to, you know, death cross coming up relatively soon, I'd say in the next week, or, or sorry, in the next couple of ticks, uh, uh, barring any sort of major rally uh, back up to 6,000, literally, you will get that death cross. Um, weekly over here, obviously, the weekly is nowhere near getting death crossed. It's not going to get death crossed for. I mean, Bitcoin would literally have to like go down another thousand dollars and stay there for like a couple, like half, like four or five months, and then maybe you might get it. 
maybe even probably even longer than that it's in nowhere near danger of happening uh, if it happened that would be really fucking bad but uh nowhere near happening although we have gotten a new tick on the weekly of course closed uh, closed the last week at 7 p.m east standard time last night and again the 21 exponential and the green 55 exponential are gaining momentum away from each other gaining momentum this is how we knew this this trend is unlikely to reverse anytime soon yeah, you might have bounces here and there, but it doesn't matter. I'm looking to sell the bounce, not fucking, not BTFD. That's, oh man, I understand that people have different perspectives in this market. So, you know, fair enough with that. But, uh, but hey, just thought I'd kind of say that. Um, uh, the blue 30 simple moon average right here, which I care about the slope on. I care the most about the slope on that guy. It's still, still aggressively sloped to the downside. Not fucking good there either. So don't really have any much, uh, anything much to say uh, other than that. Let's put on the 10 simple and see where that guy's coming in around. Uh, yeah, the 10 simple is now well below 6,000. It's actually around 6,600, or sorry, 5,500. And more importantly, the yellow 21 expansion moving average is actually around 6,000 now. So we are just building more and more pressure at that 6,000 level. So Bitcoin, very likely to have to spend a long time below 6,000. And when I say long time, I mean on a weekly time frame, that's, you know, I don't know, half a year, a year, probably, perhaps more. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a while. If people are expecting this to just turn around, you know, today, I'd say that 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 uh, that is a less likely thing to happen. Uh, over here, you know, three day, all these exponentials uh, are, are kind of crossing over and, and getting below that six thousand me uh, metric right over there as well. Uh, two day, you know, even worse. You, you know, your twenty one exponential is getting so far down on your two day. It's literally at five thousand now. Your daily, your daily twenty one exponential is all the way is at forty five hundred now. This is like, this is really fucking intense pressure. And look, it's not losing its slope just yet. Uh, green fifty five exponential below fifty. I mean, it's like below fifty five hundred now. One hundred exponential, well below. 6,000 and the 200 exponential is going to is going to cross below 6,000, you know, probably in like a couple weeks as well. Um, although it's going to take, you know, it, it takes its time. Uh, but Hey, once this guy gets below 6,000, I mean, that's, you know, it's not, it's, this is not fucking any, anytime soon. Um, Com, uh, you know, compared to what I think a lot of people think. Um, okay, what else do we have to talk about? Oh yes, we need to go back on over here to to, to the weekly to kind of wrap this guy up. Again, um, just talk, you know, and we we didn't flesh out this idea enough. Um, but but kind of like the next blue box territory being right over here, you know, lining up with our next high volume node. Yes, we are kind of stuck on a high volume node right now, which does make me think that we spend a little bit more time going sideways here again. Support or sorry, the last kind of tick on this high volume node is about thirty six hundred. So again, I think that we're gonna spend a lot of time, you know, between thirty and about 41 um, sorry about 40 36 and 42 um, and uh, once you lose 36 there ain't nothing doing on this volume node right over here just like when you lost six six thousand there was nothing doing all the way down to the low four thousands well we got the same sort of setup right over here um, you know uh, pushing you from about 3600 all the way into like your mid to high two uh, thousands right over here um, so I'll just kind of leave it at that um, and I guess we can cover up mr. Buterol really quickly and then uh, and then I'll let you go uh, mr. Buterol all right over here again very very bad um you know people looking at this as capitulation guys it's capitulation i see heavy volume and it's red so no lower well <laughs> you might be in for a surprise because uh there is very little holding this thing up um from really the you know the 50 to 60 dollar range right over here but yes you do have support before that around 90 dollars of course you know mr bureau does not really move on his own he kind of just follows bitcoin um uh, but but essentially, you know, the range for Mr. Buterol, you have pretty hefty resistance coming in around the 124 range right over here. 124 to 129 is kind of like your next big range of resistance. And uh, your current low or your current support is around 110 and 110 and a half. So the second that you break 110 and a half, yeah, technically speaking, you do have this guy right here. This is not strong support at 103. It's not strong at all. Uh, you got you got support. I think your next level is around ninety dollars or something like that. But again, it's gonna you know whenever Bitcoin breaks thirty six hundred, that's likely when you're gonna see this guy start to you know explore new territories. Uh, another double digit shitcoin baby. Uh, sorry, shouldn't say that. Um, it's actually the next world computer. Forget about all that SEC bullshit, guys. It's just a bunch of fud. Okay, they just want your buterols cheap. So that they can, so that they can buy crypto kitties. Don't let them have your crypto kitties cheap. Can someone buy my crypto kitties for twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, and people were buying fucking crypto kitties for twenty thousand dollars. Crazy shit. You ever want to know if if you're in a bubble? Look for that kind of shit again, and you, you probably will notice the next time. If you don't notice the next time, then you've learned nothing uh, through this go around. Um, anyways, okay, I'm gonna go back on a Bitcoin over here, wrap this bitch up, uh, put put putting it back on the hourly. Hey, actually, kind of rejecting this level right here. Nice wick below. 
Um, nice little bull wick below the support. But again, I don't have an opinion on, on you know, do you break this upside or down? I mean, it looks like you want to break to the downside here and probably explore 3,800. But again, I'm, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd play a breakout out of uh, 30, uh, what is this, about 3,990. Don't see much stopping you from about 40, uh, 40, 60-ish area. Um, if 40, 60 gets taken out, then yeah, you can start exploring, you know, you know the 42, uh, 42, 50 area right over here. Um, by the same token, if you do lose 39, uh, 30, nothing holding you up from this 3,800 level right over here. Um, if that level gets taken out, then, uh, then 3,600. And I believe that that's essentially going to be the range this week. That's, that's really all I'm looking to do, um, right now is just play the ranges. And, uh, and I believe that, you know, you are going to get stuck in the mud somewhere around 3,600 and just fill, fill this guy out probably for the next month, month and a half, some, some shit like that. It's going to be boring again. Most, most likely, um, I would change my tune if we did break 3,600, if, if we had like a full on daily diddle close below there on heavy volume, then yeah, I would be looking for that, uh, for the next level, essentially like 31, I think it was 3,100 is our 200 simple. Um, by the same token, if you do break above, uh, 4350 right over here, don't really see much stopping you from about 4,600 40 and you know, you got 4,800 above that. Um, I think that's a little bit less likely, but, uh, Hey, you know, weird, weirder things have happened. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for right now. Again, probably going to be a sideways, uh, a relatively sideways week. Although, you know, moves now, like, like th this range is literally like what, 10, 15, 20%. So it's, you know, it's a little bit deceiving, right? Um, but uh but but essentially sideways for all intents and purposes so that's going to do it for the stream hope this one finds you well i'll be back on later with a live stream some live stream action for you um look forward to see you guys there if not hope you have the best monday possible and i'll see you guys soon take care